The game show where you, as the audience, needs to decide who is telling the truth and who is lying. <laughs> Videotaping and flash photography is highly recommended. But why anyone would want a picture of these idiots is beyond me. <laughs> At this time, we present our star-studded panel of liars. Our first panelist just returned from a safari in Africa, where he encountered a bull and a zebra. He shot the zebra first because he knew he could shoot the bull any time. <laughs> Welcome to the stage, comedian John Maloney! So it's 
a, a fear of a bowel movement, is what it is. <laughs> it's not nice to yell fire in a crowded lounge, thank you. Uh, no, to, uh, blenophobia, quite simply, <laughs> quite simply, is the fear of small crowds. Not large crowds, but small crowds. <laughs> All right, then, moving on to our second panelist, we're going to go to Pete, Pete Matthews. All right, hey, hey, hello! Yeah. Good to see you. So recently, recently, let's say Blenophobia, uh, we recently got a dog. And my wife wanted a dog that didn't molt, didn't dribble, and didn't need walks. So I suggested we get a pig. But, anyway, so we're, there's a little pub at the end of our lane called The Curling. So I came back from The Curling a little bit inebriated one evening. And our neighbours, it's quite farmy country where we live, and our neighbours have a guard goose. Because I don't know if you know this, but a goose is a fantastic guard dog equivalent. Anyway, so I come home and the guard goose was out, was out in the lane. So I thought, oh no. I've... So anyway, in order to, to get the goose to safety, I popped it under the arm. And with the intention of just going home, just calling my neighbour and saying, I got your goose. Anyway, I go in to the bottom of the stairs and I open the door. And I see the slippers appear at the top of the landing. It's quite late. And I've got a goose. And I'm like, oh. And I see my wife. And I say, oh. she goes, you're drunk. I go, no, 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 I'm not. I said, what do you think of the pig? She goes, no, I know you're drunk. That's a goose. I said, I was talking to the goose. <laughs> but, but the reason, oh, shush, my wife's a treasure. She should be taken out and buried. No, my <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I do this just to get the guys on my side. In a minute, I'll do something for the girls. But anyway, now listen, um, I'm British. I'm very proud, very proud Englishman. We just had St. George's Day. Happy St. George's Day to any Brits out there. There you go. So, Blenophobia comes from, actually, the Duke of Marlborough. A bit of history here. The Duke of, Duke of Marlborough um, has a fantastic uh, country home called Blenheim Palace. And he used to breed... It bloody is not a liar. You Google the Duke of Marlborough and it lives in Blenheim Palace. Anyway, so the Duke of Marlborough is, is no, well, not the current Duke, but the old current Duke, um, the, the old Duke of Marlborough, um, he used to breed the Blenheim Spaniel. Now these are very yappy little dogs, much like the Queen loves a, cor a corgi. I assure you, the Queen does love a corgi. Who shouted liar when I said the Queen loves a corgi? Right, you are wrong, because the Queen loves a corgi. Thank you. Bless you. Anyway, so, the Duke of Marlborough, how long did you want this to run? The Duke of Marlborough bred, bred, bred the short, the, the, the Spaniel, the Blenheim Spaniel is a short-legged dog. And blenophobia, these are very yappy dogs, very jumpy yappy dogs. And anyone that goes there will, will experience this, the, the blenheim spaniel. And basically, blenophobia is the fear of a short-legged dog. <laughs> All right, there we go. Moving on then to Simeon. What is your definition of blenophobia? First of all, this is a total disaster. <laughs> <laughs> people, I love you all. <laughs> folks, let's look at the word. These people up there, let's look at the word, folks. Let's dissect it. You've got a phobia, right? A phobia, right? We all know what that means. It's a fear. It's a great fear, but we're going to fix the fear. Now, Let's look at what the Bleno, right, what it stands for. Because you're not hearing the truth from the media, and I'm going to tell you what it stands for. Let's look at it, and I'm going to read it through with you. Bleno, Biden lost election November. <laughs> with you. 
you people because I have more wine to get through, so I'm... <laughs> Quite simply, blenophobia is the fear of sticky substances. It's like, thank God I've never seen any. inserted into your bottom while you're asleep. Um, and that's the definition. Alright, thank you, John. Alright, there we go. So we're going to quickly go back to our panellists. I'm going to ask you guys just to give us a very quick, short, heat, brief, on uh, <laughs> your definitions, quickly. Starting with you, Mike. Sure. It's the fear of food mixings on your plate. <laughs> they didn't believe the first one, so I'm going to that one. Alright, Pete. Uh, it's the fear of a short legged dog. Simeon? Fear of slime. And John. Ouch, that hurt. <laughs> You've heard it from our panelists over here. Now you guys need to decide which one of our panelists is telling the truth. So we're going to give you a couple of seconds to decide, and then by a round of applause, we're going to decide which one is telling the truth. Is it Simeon? Is it John? Is it Pete or is it Mark? Who's it going to be? Matthews. We're going to start 
with you. Crapulence, please. Okay, well, actually, I was just correcting there. It's actually pronounced Crapulence. Straight off the bat. So, anyway, so my brother Steve, uh, he, he's an investment banker in the city of London. I often say to him, could you check my balance? And he just pushes me over. But... <laughs> Alright, there's these two snakes. <laughs> so, no, you know, he, always, he does... He, he, his his favourite joke, he's, been, he's a banker, his favourite joke is you give a man a gun and he'll rob a bank. You give a man a bank and he'll rob everyone. <laughs> anyway, so Crapulence actually, again, you have to break it down. Uh, it's actually from the Community Reinvestment Act, which is the CRA. And now the CRA encourages financial institutions to invest and offer a level of opulence and luxuriousness that often afforded low-income neighbourhoods. And basically, crapulence is community investment by a financial institution. Alright, there we go. Short and sweet. Moving on to Simeon. Mm -hmm. uh, very simply, a crapulence is what you call when you're going to shit yourself. <laughs> it gets shorter and sweeter. Thank you, Samir. All right, next on up, John. Crap, you look. What is your definition? No, wait, hold on. That's, is that your that's not my real answer. That's Please. not your real answer. Please. If we had dined at Johnny Rockets, we'd all need a crap, you look. <laughs> I had to write this down. This is actually used, a term used in farming when you have an abundance of crops. I don't know the age of this term, but farming term used for an abundance of crops. Thank you very much. As per the dictionary definition of Wikipedia. All right, there we go. John. Crepulence actually is, uh, it is a, a, a medical term and it comes from the original Latin for the lower colon, which is the crapulus, that is the original term for the lower colon. And actually, the way that they would define it is that, you know that feeling that you get when you just have like a, a heavy meal and then you realise that you need to shit out the last one? because it's just kind of in the way. It reminds me of the old joke of a bear having a shit in the woods and a rabbit is hopping past and the bear says to the rabbit, does shit stick to your fur? And the rabbit says, yes it does. So he gets the rabbit and wipes his ass with him. Um, so yes, crapulence is from crapulous um, the feeling of uh, just being a bit too full and needing to vacate the previous meal. All right, thank you, John. Mike. Thank you. Before we start, can I say that this has been the best cruise that I've ever been cruise director of? <laughs> the guests on board have been my favorite. is the horse of the Greek god Diarrheus. <laughs> to understand what crapulence is, you need to know the difference between a blind hunter and a constipated owl. A, a, a blind hunter shoots and shoots and never hits, while a constipated owl hoots and hoots and never... Sh <laughs> but I need to ask a question. Have you enjoyed the service from your waiters and waitresses on board? Are they incredible? And all the food, the food, you know, the chefs that we have on board, you know, we did that cooking demonstration, but I found out that crapulence will actually happen on night number nine of a cruise <laughs> when all that rich food begins stirring and mixing in your stomach, and then the crapulence will happen. Now, it's not what you think it is. This will actually give you a warning that it's about to happen, and the warning is seven short followed by one long blast. <laughs> Crapulence is the sickness from too much food or drink. All right, thank you, Mike. All right, one more time, we're going to go to our panelists and give us a quick brief of what your definition is, starting with you, Pete. 
Okay, it's community investment by a financial institution. Thank you, Simeon. Farming term for an abundance of crops. John? The need to empty your lower colon. <laughs> and mine. Sickness from too much food. Thank you very much. All right, so we're going to give you guys a couple of seconds just to think about who you would like to vote. Who is the person who is telling the truth?
Lobcock is actually uh, from its 16th century Old High German stroke uh, medieval English, so it does it does actually appear in, uh, appear in Shakespeare. In Shakespeare, actually, in the uh, they call it the Scottish play. Are you allowed to say M A C B E T H on stage anymore? It's uh, because if Act One, Scene One, it's mentioned when the three witches meet, uh, where they where they're there. You know, when shall we three meet again in thunder and lightning or in rain? When the hurly burly is done, when the battle is lost and won, that will there be the set of sun. Come grey malkin paddock calls and non fed is foul. And foul is fair, hover through the fog and fill the air. Fuck me, here comes Macbeth, he's got a lock <laughs> that's, that's where it comes from. <laughs> what have I done now? You're not allowed to say yes. We are now, apparently. Oh, I thought it was 18 and above. A bit like that story. A lobcock is a dull or boring person. There you go. A lobcock is a dull or boring person. There you go. What do you think? All right. Thank you very much, John. And to you, Mike. Yes, a lobcock is an uh, animal. It's half lobster, half rooster. To understand what a lobcock is, uh, back in Fort Lauderdale, John, Pete, and I went to an adult entertainment nightclub for lunch. And while we walked in, Pete was a VIP, went right to the VIP section, and a lady started dancing in front of our table. As she was dancing and bent over, much like this lady just did, uh, Pete whipped out a $5 bill, licked it, and stuck it to the right cheek of her buttock. She continues dancing. John takes out a $10 bill, licks it, and sticks it to the left cheek of her buttock. They both look at me, I pull out my ATM card, swipe it down the middle, and do the cash. Anyway, I mean, I mean, I'm such a, a natural after all. 
But that brings me to the word lobcock. Now, obviously that's not the perfect way to hit a ball. However, a lobcock is the name given to a perfect shot. Not in the game of golf, however, it's in the game of badminton. And when the shuttlecock is played in such a way that it lobs the opposing player or players and lands within the court, it's called a lobcock. A perfect shot in the game of badminton. All right, perfect. Thank you, Pete. All right, so we're going to come back to our panelists over here, and if you could give us a short, brief description of your definition. And once again, back to Simeon. Do I use the clean chin base? All right, there we go. John? A dull or boring person. Mike? A tool used to clean clear chimneys. <laughs> I like his answer. <laughs> All right, there we go. And Pete? Uh, a perfect shot in a game of badminton. All right, perfect. There we go. So, ladies and gentlemen, you have heard it from our panelists over here. Now it's up to you to decide who is the one who is telling the truth. Are you being put down as well? He says, no, I'm having my toenails clipped. 
So we took her to the best place to get lobster in the entire United States. We went to Maine. Oh, Banga? Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Sit up! Sit up is the wrong way to snorkel.
right. So Frankie Howard used to have a catchphrase. Who knows what the catchphrase was? Thank you very much. It was actually Titty Ye Not. He would go, he was quite a camp uh, an actor, comedian, and he'd go, mm, Titty Ye Not. And he would say, Titty Ye Not. To give you an example, to give you an example, um, he would often have a character, a mischievous character called Johnny. And Frankie Howard would tell these long-winded jokes. I'll try and speed it up. He said, the teacher asked the class to use the word fascinate. So Molly puts up her hand and says, my family would see Granddad's farm, and we saw his pet sheep, and it was fascinating. And the teacher said, that's very nice, Molly, but that's fascinating. I want fascinate. So then Sally puts her hand up and says, my family went to see Rock City, and I was fascinated. She says, that's very good, Sally, but I want fascinate, not fascinated. And then little Johnny puts his hand up. And the teacher sort of rolls her eyes thinking, because I've been burnt by Molly, by, by little Johnny a few times. And finally, she goes, go ahead, thinking, how much damage can he do? So little Johnny says, my Aunt Carol has a sweater with ten buttons, but her boobs are so big she can only fascinate. <laughs> now, that was a classic, that was a classic Frankie Howard line. And the titter ye not was a phrase, a catchphrase from the words tit up. And tit up, the actual word is, it's the body movement caused by uncontrollable laughter. When you do this, that's a tit up. And that was from Frank Howard. There you go. It'll be a history for you. <laughs> you know, be, you know, all of these guys are, are incredible in their own rights, and it's an honor to be here on stage with them. Liar. So much so, Dan, if you have that song ready, we wrote you a song, and we had it professionally recorded by our voices cast, and we're going to submit it uh, for a commercial. Uh, Dan, if you have that song and you can you could roll that song, you know the one I'm talking about. You, you know what song? You know the, the 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 Bud Light song. We're submitting to Bud Light. It's uh it's you know what I mean. The one I gave you on the on the thing. We reported it professionally. Oh, that was on the other one. Okay, well we'll have to do it another night. That was awkward. All right. It was, it was gonna be so it was gonna be so perfect. Okay, sorry. Today is not the day. Your operation's a total disaster. Liar! <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, give this man a raise. <laughs> All right, there we go. Simeon, your definition, please. Uh, tit up, is that the word? Tit up. This, my friends, is a phrase used in strip clubs. <laughs> For example, let's say you had not to of an attractive dancer, and then a real hot chick comes out. You would say to your partner, well, she's got a tit up on the last girl. When 
Tinseltown and Broadway said no. The cruise ship said yes. <laughs> you may never get your star on Hollywood's Walk of Fame, but you do get free access to the salad bar. Your peppy numbers bring the audience to its feet, which is impressive because most of them use walkers. Your motto, the show must go on and on and on. So crack open an ice cold bun like Prince of the Porthole. You can swab our poop deck anytime. But like beer, that's a bush in Louis, Missouri. while carrying a duck that has a gerbil stuck in its butt who goes to a bank and runs into a dull and boring person who happened to be sick from eating too much food and drink, then watches someone hit a perfect shot in Batman while cleaning the chimney while needing to get his nails clipped. Shortest definition ever. Pete. It's the body movement caused by uncontrollable laughter. Thank you, and Simeon. Prancing of a horse. All right, there we go. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to give you a couple of seconds, and you need to decide which one of our panelists over here is telling the truth. And honestly, I don't think it's any. Okay,
Uh, we're on uh, tomorrow night, 8.30 and 10.30, and then after the 10.30 show, we lock the doors and it's group sex. So, um, you've all bought the ticket, you've seen the contract.